Welcome to The Family Plot, Gardening in the Mid-South. Thanks for joining us. Today, we're gonna to answer some of the most frequently asked questions we get at extension offices around the area for the fall and winter. So if you have a lawn, a vegetable garden, or ornamental plants around your home, you'll wanna stay tuned. Frequently asked questions. That's just ahead on The Family Plot, Gardening in the Mid-South, so stay with us. This is a production of WKNO Memphis. Production funding for The Family Plot, Gardening in the Mid-South is provided by Goodwin's Landscape and Garden Center in Germantown since 1943 and continuing to offer its plants for successful gardening with seven greenhouses and three acres of plants plus comprehensive landscape services. International Paper Foundation. The WKNO Production Fund. The WKNO Endowment Fund. And by viewers like you. Thank you. Welcome to The Family Plot. I'm Chris Cooper. Joining me today is Booker T. Lee. Booker is the Tipton County Extension Director. Walter Battle, he's the Hayward County Extension Director. And Tanya Ashworth is here today. She's a UT Extension Agent in Fayette County. Thanks for joining us. Glad to be here. Thanks. Thanks. This is going to be fun. Okay. Okay. <laughs> As you can imagine, we get lots of plant questions at the Extension Office. After all, it's one of the things we're there for. But some questions have a way of cropping up year after year. So today, we've assembled our most frequently asked questions in three areas, lawns, vegetables, and ornamentals. So, let's get started with the grass man the grass himself, man. Mr. Like, Booker T. Lee. I like grass. All right, that's we know man. you love grass. Well, here's the first question about grass, Booker. How tall should I leave my warm season grass? We talk about Bermuda, Zoysia, mm. during the winter months. Chris, I'm so glad because I, you know, I, like, I like cutting my grass uh, Twice or twice a week during the growing season, but now you we'll repeat that again. I like cutting my grass twice a twice week. Twice a week, that's oh good during the growing season. Okay, but it's that time coming around to an end now, okay. and, and we get that call a lot of time. People want to know, should I cut it real low? I should cut it tall. What should I do? You want to leave it about the same height okay. that you are cutting it during the regular season. The reason of that, you want to protect those root system during the winter months. All right. So we get through a real cold, cold one, and, and, and your grass is real low. It can damage those root system. I try to leave that last cutting, <laughs> clipping on the, on the grass. Okay, on the grass. That'd be, a, that'd be like a little insulation for the root system in there. Okay. But keep it about two, two and a half inches tall. That's for Bermuda grass and your Zoysia grass. Those are your two warm season grass. And you probably start seeing later on, it's probably going to start turning brown. Okay. You know, people want to say, why did grass dying? No, <laughs> my grass dying, but uh, I let him from up north, he came down here and saw the brown grass. He said, Everybody grass down here. <laughs> Just <laughs> going <laughs> dormant. Yeah, because they have more like fescue okay. in, in, in the north, so it'd be uh, cool season grass. Okay. So, well, here's the next question, okay, okay, that you get a lot. It says, Should I fertilize my grass during the winter? You want this, this is a good time, probably about the last of September, you want to start fertilizing your lawn okay. grass. Especially with a nitrogen fertilizer. Because nitrogen fertilizer is what makes it grow. It gets ready to go dormant. You don't want to add no growth to it during that time. Because okay. we have a real cold winter and you got some new growth on there, it can kill that grass or damage that grass. And you can see the results of it uh, in the springtime when it starts mm -hmm. to come back again. You start wondering what happened to my lawn, why these spots are still in there, the brown spot, because you cut it, cold winter, and damage the grass. But uh, if you want to fertilize your lawn then use something like Phosphate and potassium. Okay. Those are the second two numbers. The first number is nitrogen, right. then your phosphate and potassium. Let the first number be missing. Okay. Then add phosphate and potassium to that, and that'll give, that'll give you a good uh, root system okay. and also protect it during the winter months. So the root system still active in the ground during the winter months. That's month. right. Mm -hmm. That's right. Okay, here's the next question. It says, what is a good pre emergence herbicide to put on your grass to help control? Weeds. We know we like it. I hate weeds. No. <laughs> no, I, 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 I hate weeds in my yard. No, I, I, you, you got weeds in your yard, you, 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 they grow fast. Uh -huh. And we want to protect those <laughs> weeds. If you get rid of those weeds in there, a pre emergent, you put it down probably twice of the year. You want to put it down now. This is a good time to put mm -hmm. it down now. Uh, dimension. Dimension or yeah, snapshot. Sure. Those are two uh, pre emergent that you can go to one of the gardens in the store, a home a nursery somewhere, and, and try to find those in there. Okay. And most pre emergent now, they got to be activated into the soil through rain, water, or irrigation. All right. You know, it went so many hours, and that's going to be on the label. You need that's to right. read the label on there to tell you how to put it down. 
Then you might want to come back again in the springtime before those summer weeds begin to start to germinate and put you another pre-emerge down, protect those, uh, get those weeds out of there. Okay. Because weeds grow. Oh, yeah, <laughs> and, they you get, grow. and you got some bad soil, weeds going to grow in there. So you need to try to do that. And then they grow in good soil too. We need to protect those, uh, uh, get rid of those weeds in there. But you can't have weeds, you cut it twice a week. As a matter of fact, I don't have no weeds. <laughs> but if, now, if, if you're doing all the work to your yard, and your neighbor not doing That's anything, right. <laughs> so you're still going to probably end up with some weeds in your yard. So That's you right. need to try to make sure you tell your neighbor, do a little thing to your yard sometime. <laughs> <laughs> you're right. Now here's our next question, Bucky. It says, is it too late to plant my Bermuda seeds? Yeah, Bermuda is a warm season grass. Yeah. Bermuda and Zoya grass are warm season grass. And they grow during the warm, the, the warm part of the year. Mm -hmm. And they'll start growing probably like the middle of May, depending on how high was summer will start warming up. And that's the time you want to plant those seeds, probably sometime in May. Okay. But now it's too late now. If you put them down now, they might come, but they don't be killed off by the, by the winter. Okay. So save your money and wait. <laughs> save your money. Don't go out and buy no Maruta seed or Zorja seeds now. Wait until, the, wait until uh, May to probably do that. Okay. Now you got some sod, you got a spreader, you can find some sod, so now you can put sod down in, in there. Okay, yeah. so you can sod any time. You sod any time. You need to try to loosen the soil up, make sure it come in contact. Okay. Because uh, it, it will grow. You lay that dormant, so called, you lay that dormant, but it'll, in the springtime, you'll start seeing it uh, catch on. Okay. Mm. Now here's our next question. It says, Should I water my grass during the winter months? How about that one? You, you know, a lot of times you plant things, you use a lot of water during the winter months, especially evergreen plants. Uh -huh. And people think that because the Bermuda grass is completely dormant, but those root systems are still active in the soil, and uh, if we don't get a whole lot of rain during this, uh, we don't get a whole lot of rain during the summer months, winter months. You need to go out there and put some water on that line. You don't need to water like you do in the summertime, but right. you need to have some water <laughs> down there and those root systems protect those root systems right. in there. Especially if you go through a real, real dry, dry winter. And we have been through some dry winter sometimes, mm -hmm. so you need mm -hmm. to uh, just keep a check on that. Don't worry about doing it like you're doing in the, in the summertime, but make sure you keep it kind of uh, in there the over period of time. Maybe no more than once or twice during the winter months, it should be sufficient for that. Okay, mm -hmm. keep it moist. All right. Mm -hmm. Now here's the last question. It says, "Is now a good time to add lime to my grass?" Well, this is a good time too. Now, one thing you don't want to go out there to add lime. You, know, <laughs> okay. you, you don't want to go out there to add lime because you might not need no lime. Right. So you need to go out there and do a soil test. Mm. <laughs> this is a good time to do a soil test. That's right. I heard Walter say he was doing soil test the other day and right. putting a soil sample. And this is a good time to do that. And you want to get it from three or four different locations in your yard. You know, go from the corner, center, and whatever, and mix that together, and, and send it off. To, and send it off. Mm -hmm. And uh, right now it's called seven dollar per box, mm -hmm. and it's worth that seven dollars. Oh, worth it. And yeah. it'll, t it'll tell you, it, right now you probably get it back in a week time. And you still have plenty of time to add lime if you need to add some lime to your soil. It'll come back, and for, for Bermuda grass mm -hmm. and Zorja grass, you want between 6.0 and 6.5. Okay. And then when you get the test back, it'll tell you, it'll tell you how much you need to add to that to get it to that level there. Right. So this is a good time to add lime to your soil if you need lime to your soil. This is a great time here, because by the time that Bermuda grass and Zoya grass get ready to start next <laughs> you year, ready to go, huh? everything be ready to go. You, you ready to go, you better start cutting. Yeah, that's right. That's right. <laughs> yeah, but, but soil test. Soil test. We say it all the time. Why so, guess soil, soil test. test? But $7, you know, Chris, you can't go wrong. You can't go wrong. All right, but we appreciate that good information. Mm -hmm. All right, now we have a viewer email. And Mr. Al writes, says, Dear Doc, can you identify this plant for me? Listen at this, Tanya. It's possibly the prettiest weed I've ever seen. <laughs> the blooms are lavender blue and are feral like a fern fiddlehead. Is it evasive? Is it native to this area? We have it there on the screen. And you know what that is, Mr. Al? That is the blue porter weed. Blue porter weed. Okay, it is a pretty weed. Mm -hmm. uh, it's native <laughs> to South Florida. You find it in the Caribbean, uh, Bahamas, Bermuda. It's a fast grower. It's a perennial. It has the flower spikes. And then it actually has the blooms that are on the flower spikes. Um, can just about grow in any condition. <laughs> and it's actually, it's pretty, though. Yeah. Are you, did, wow. did, are you did, familiar you, with it, Tanya? I'm not, but okay. I mean, if it were blooming in my yard, I'd, I'd have a hard time pulling it up, <laughs> I mean, probably. It, 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 it looks really good. <laughs> it looks yeah, it's real nice. And, and Carol yeah. Reese told me she usually sees a lot of it in farmland fields. Okay. So there you have it, Mr. Mm -hmm. Al. Pretty plant. Mm -hmm. Pretty plant. Pretty weed. Mm -hmm. Pretty weed. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Walter, we're going to talk about vegetables now, okay? So here's the most frequently asked questions about vegetables. The first one is, are there any Roundup Ready vegetables? Interesting question. The answer to that is yes. Okay. But also no. <laughs> All right? Now, here's, let's take the yes part first. Uh, I am aware of a company uh, called Seminus 
that has sweet corn. Okay. Uh, Roundup Ready, sweet corn. And uh, the company, I love the, the name of the cultivars. Uh, listen to this. Uh, the cultivars that they offer are Obsession 2, <laughs> and it's a bicolor. Okay. Uh, Passion 2, which okay. is a yellow sweet corn, and Temptation 2. Which is another backup. Wow, sounds like some yeah. interesting names. Yeah, it's yeah. uh, not like cologne. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> wow. But the only problem with it is that currently they're only available mm. uh, in uh, seed counts of twenty-five thousand, which means wow. that you can only get it if you're a commercial grower, you know, who's going to plant on a right. commercial scale. Right. So, but I would imagine probably down the road, it'll probably work its way into the market for, mm. for home gardens. Okay. I'm pretty sure. That's the only one I'm aware of. Okay, now for the one. viewers, what do we mean by Roundup Ready? What, what does that mean? What that means is that uh, as that plant is growing, uh, if you follow the directions, uh, there are certain times that you can go out there instead of getting the hoe out and chopping, <laughs> right. you can just go out there and spray Roundup on it mm. or some product that contains glyphosate, so right. to speak. So uh, that's that's really what it means. It, it, you can put your hoe up. Okay. So, yeah. so that's, that, that can only be good. Yeah, that's that a good thing. Good. Right? It's good, uh, yeah, yeah. So there's a lot of people wanting that. Okay. <laughs> good deal. Okay, here's our second question. What is meant by BT in association to vegetables? Okay, right. we get that question a lot. Okay. BT. Well, you know, actually the BT stands for uh, Bacillus thuringiensis. Uh, I may have butchered that a little bit. <laughs> but um, it's actually a... Uh, soil bacteria mm -hmm. uh, that is, you know, obviously found in the soil. And what it actually does uh, for, for all these people in the insect <laughs> world and <laughs> microbiology and all, it crystallizes the worm's gut. Oh, mm -hmm. So it kills them. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Now, uh, basically, uh, uh, this toxin, like I say, is found in nature. Uh, and uh, there is a uh, commercial product out there where you can spray it on your cabbage or whatever. Uh, called dipel, mm -hmm. and then if the worm eats that leaf, then the worm gets that toxin in it, and it crystallizes in his gut, and he dies. So it's pretty interesting. Yeah, it goes. Mm -hmm. So that's yeah, what yeah, BT means. Okay. And good. it's also javelin is another one. Okay. A product yes, that okay. contains yes, the BT yes. that most people can get. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, staying with the BT theme, the next question is: Are there any BT vegetables? Uh, once again, like the, <laughs> like the previous question, yes and no. Uh -huh. uh, as far as I'm aware of, I do know that there are some BT sweet corns out there, and there's also uh, some BT Irish potatoes mm. out there. But again, they're only available to commercial growers. Okay. But once again, probably over time, they'll get into the marketplace for home gardeners, mm. hopefully. Okay. Now, do you know anybody commercially that has the, the BT uh, vegetables? Uh, not, okay. I, not commercially, not, okay. just that one company, Seminus, okay. is what I'm aware of. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. I wonder how that tastes, though. I mean, if anybody's tasted it, it yeah. tastes pretty good. Oh, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here's that next question. It says, uh, can fruit trees be pruned in the fall? Well, you know, actually, trees can be pruned anytime. But the best time to prune your fruit trees here in, in the Mid-South area mm -hmm. is really around March. That's really the best time to prune them. Uh, that's when I prune my apple trees at home. But okay. you can you can prune anytime, really. And I, and a little note I like to add to people, <laughs> uh, for people, it makes excellent barbecue wood. <laughs> uh, I'm serious. Peach right. does a wonderful job. Apple, pear, all of them, they, they do a wonderful job. Okay. Mm -hmm. So if you have any branches that are crossed <laughs> or any that are broken, uh, you know, it's a bit good time. Yeah, to that's either. why mm -hmm. just just rack them on off and mm -hmm. make sure you get all those little water sprouts that we call those mm -hmm. little spurs mm -hmm. that come up from the base, you know, cut all those off and, and you'll be fine. And what you get when you prune, you're actually going to get bigger fruit mm -hmm. okay. is, is, is what you're going to get. Okay. And you're going to help that tree be able to uh, support, mm -hmm. you know, some heavy fruit if, you know, if, you, if you get a big year. Okay. You have any fruit trees at home? Yes. Mm -hmm. I have oh, apple. Yeah. Apple. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. Good deal. How are your apples this oh, year? Oh, man, they were great. They were great. They were great. All right. Here's the next question. It says, what are the black spots on my pecan Kernels. I, and I would say, oh gosh, I get this question yeah. all the time. Mm -hmm. uh, and what you're actually dealing with there is stink bug damage. Uh, and, you know, stink bug, what they actually do, they, they take that mouth part of theirs and they puncture that hole in there. And there's some fungus that gets in there that causes that little black spot mm -hmm. on the kernel. 
Um, and the product that you can use to spray for the um, stink bug is Ortho Bug Be Gone Max mm -hmm. Lawn and Garden uh, Insect Killer. And I've had some people tell me, well, Walter, you know, I, I can't spray a big old sure. pecan tree. And I just, I just tell homeowners, get your, you know, hose-in sprayer with good water pressure and, you know, shoot it up there best you can. Okay. And, uh, and that usually takes care of a lot of, a lot of those problems. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. We have time for one last question. Okay. For the vegetables. It says, can tree leaves be used for compost? Yes. Okay. And yes. Uh, I will tell you, it will take you about five to seven months, though, okay. uh, for them to be composted. Now, one thing I want people to do with that is make sure you shred it up real, real, real good. Mm -hmm. And also uh, go to book and get some of those grass clippings <laughs> and put in there. Uh, and also along with your coffee grinds and your, uh, you know, vegetables. Mm -hmm. and, and you will want to turn that pile uh, once a month, about every 30 days. You want to turn that mm -hmm. pile, and and I will tell you, near the end of the, you know, latter part of the growing season, you'll have some good compost mm -hmm. uh, to, to add to your garden if you need. So it. a good mm -hmm. mixture of greens and browns, huh? Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, that sounds good. good. Yeah. All right, thanks, Walter. Yeah. We have another viewer email, and it says, "Is it too late to put down grub granulate? I want to get a head start for yeah. next year's." Lawn. So who wants to tackle that? Book, I see you. Okay, yeah. You, you want to get that one? Yeah, okay. uh, uh, grills, they, they really do damage your grass. Okay. With, with, uh, the root system in there. All right. And, and the best time to put that down is probably in July to September. Because a lot of times, that's when, when they begin to lay their eggs out there. You want to get rid of the eggs out there. Okay. And then during the, later on, they'll go back down into the ground. Okay. They get they got enough food in the, from, the, from the root system right. to survive <laughs> until they come up again in the springtime. Then the springtime, Early summer will be another time to put your uh, granule down to get rid of the, uh, the grass in there. Okay. And you can tell you, before I put anything down, I go out there and dig a spot up, dig some uh, a spot and just see okay. how many grass in there. Because you, you might not have that many in there. Mm -hmm. So you don't want to just treat, you don't, you don't see anything, just one right. grill and stuff in there. Okay. But I have uh, kind of work, you chemical wise and stuff in there. So okay. in there. But, uh, but now uh, uh, the springtime, uh, uh, July, September, a good time to put a granule down, and you read the label. You probably yeah. got to water it in and mm, get it down sure. to, to the to the to the to the insects. Okay. Mm -hmm. what, what kind of product would you use? Well, is it bear, one specific that you, you know, bears have a lot of things that you okay. can use for grub killers in there, and you're going to still in there, and they have some things that you can use put on there. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then, and again, that's it's some things. Uh, read the label. It's something here for grubs and also for the eggs. So you need to make sure you get, look at the, what you're getting in there when you read the label. Okay. Mm -hmm. Which is why it's important. Why it's important. Read the label. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, Miss Tanya, ornamentals. Okay. okay. Here's that first question. All right. Should I prune in the fall? Well, uh, I would kind of agree with some of what Walter just said. Uh, you can prune a little anytime, but if it were me and I would, were going to try to prune my, my trees and shrubs, I would wait until late winter and early spring. Mm -hmm. Uh, if you prune too much right now, uh, that can promote a flush of growth, which is not something that you want going right. into winter. And it also leave an open wound. Um, which could, you know, be harmful during the winter. However, uh, the exception to that is your early spring flowering right. shrubs like your azaleas. Right. You don't want to prune them late winter, early spring because they're about to bloom. So the best time to, to prune your uh, early spring bloomers is right after they bloom. But for other things, shrubs and trees and things that you're not worried too much about the bloom, I would wait until uh, late winter to do that. Late winter mm -hmm. to prune. Okay, good. Uh, the second question is, should I mulch now? What do I use? How much do I put down? Yes, you do want to mulch down. Yeah. Uh, the reason is to protect the root system, just like with Booker's grass, you know, trying to protect the roots <laughs> of the grass. You want to do the same thing for your shrubs and your ornamentals, you know, kind of insulate them from the, from the cold. And as far as what to use, mm -hmm. anything organic and non-matting, um, that can be pine straw, it can be pine bark mulch. I like to use just fall leaves, mm -hmm. um, and pretty soon your neighbors are going to have them it bagged up and ready <laughs> for right. you. It's going to be free, and as long as it's not a black walnut tree, because mm -hmm. uh, those can, they have a chemical juggling that inhibits uh, growth of other plants, but any other kind of a tree leaf, um, you can use. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, how much should the homeowner put down? I would say two to three inches would two be days. adequate. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, next question is, when and how do I plant bulbs such as tulips, daffodils, etc.? Okay, well, now is the perfect time to do that, yeah. and they're already starting to put that stuff out in the garden centers. Uh, you can plant your tulips, your narcissus, Dutch iris right now. Um, and the way I like to do it is, um, 
I know some people don't want to plant tulips because <laughs> they have a tendency not to come back each mm -hmm. and every year. Every year, they, you kind of get fewer and fewer blooms. But the way I look at it is I go to the grocery store and I buy cut flowers and I don't expect them to last five years. So uh -huh. I don't mind putting out a few tulip bulbs, you know, every, every fall. So the best time to put it out is late September to first part of November. So we're right in that window mm -hmm. to do yeah. it. Anytime before the ground gets frozen really will work. Um, and you want to till up that area and make sure that it has a nice loose soil bed. And then um, you can add bone meal, which is an mm -hmm. organic fertilizer. That will provide calcium, manganese, phosphorus for the root system. And you don't want to put the bone meal on top of the ground like you would a granular fertilizer. Right. You want to incorporate that into the loosened soil that you've um, prepared. You want the bone meal at the root zone level for your bulbs. Okay. And as far as how deep to plant, um, you can use the bulb itself as your guide. So you want to plant at two to three times the depth of the height of the bulb. So the bulb tells you how deep to plant. Just make sure you get the right end up. That's right. <laughs> no, you don't have to get the right end up. So if you want to plant tulip bulbs, see Tanya. All right. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, here's the next one. Uh, how do I force bulbs to bloom indoors? And I understand we have a little demonstration here. Yes, I brought a little Good. demonstration. I do this at my house pretty much every year getting ready for the holidays. And so if you just cannot wait to spring to see some blooms, okay. you can have some in about eight weeks. Um, uh, I like to use uh, amaryllis uh, to force. And so yesterday I went to a big box store and they already put them out. And I know you've seen the packages where it comes with a little pot and a mm -hmm. little soil thing, but you don't have to use those little cheapo plastic pots <laughs> and the little dirt. Yeah. You can do something really elegant with a forcing vase. And so this is an amaryllis uh, forcing vase. But you don't have to use a special vase. You can use a different vase like with rocks. Okay. And um, when I purchase my bulbs at a store like that, I open the box. I'm checking it out. I want to see <laughs> I want to see if there's signs of life in there. So um, as you can see, this one's got a little sign of life, right. a little leaf trying to emerge, some nice green here. And uh, all of this here, you can cut off. This is all... Um, uh, last year's roots okay. and so they're pretty much done and that'll make it look neater in your vase. Somebody's like, oh mm -hmm. no, but that's, that's, yeah, that's, that's fine. That's done. Yeah, that's fine. And uh, you're going to see uh, in a couple of weeks some really beautiful white roots coming out of this thing and that's going to teach you what a healthy root looks like okay. too. And this is really simple. You just set it down there and these uh, forcing vases hold them in that spot oh, that's and then neat. you just simply <laughs> add water. I'm going to try to do this without spilling it everywhere. <laughs> and as far to, as how much to add, um, I like to add it to where it just barely touches <laughs> the base of that bulb. If you put too much in there and your bulb is kind of floating, then <laughs> your bulb's going to rot and right. you don't want that. So you want it to where it just barely touches, just enough to where the bulb goes, hey, there's water down there. <laughs> so what you're going to do is just take that and find a a dark room in your house, mm -hmm. somewhere that's cool. I put them in the closet in my guest bedroom. Uh, it's cooler than the rest of my house. Or if you have a garage that's not heated, that's mm -hmm. enclosed or shed or something like that, you just put it in there for a few weeks. Check on it every day, make sure the water's okay. And when you see um, a whole lot of roots in the bottom and uh, the leaf coming out, then you know, okay, it's time to bring out into the living room into a nice sunny location. So you can also do that with uh, Narcissus. And uh, Narcissus, you know, it's fantastic. It smells so good. It makes your whole house smell good. <laughs> and uh, so this is just, you know, rocks I bought at a hobby store or whatever, okay. wash rocks. And uh, any kind of size vase is okay. Um, I just happen to have this flower vase at home, and I happen to use this for my Narcissus every year. Okay. And once again, when I went to the store, I looked in the package to see if I could see some sign of life, and I saw, you know, the makings yeah. of a little sprout. And you just kind of dust all them into your rocks. The package had four in it, but as like a kind of a design detail, you want to use odd numbers. So I just use three, nestle them in the rocks, pour your water in. Same with the, arm, uh, the amaryllis where it just barely touches the bottom. Uh, put them in your closet till you see a lot of roots and uh, shoots, and then you take it out and enjoy.
Let's, yes, nice. oh, that's let's pretty do neat. It. Pretty neat. Let my daughter try that. Mm -hmm. Little science project. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it'd be a little science project that she can try in school. Mm -hmm. Okay. But mm -hmm. the key is not to put too much water in there. Right. You okay. don't want to put so much that, that the roots are going to rot. You want it to just barely touch the bottom. And, you know, if there's three in there, you may have to do a little maneuvering and shifting to get them level. Um, and if you put too much water in, instead of dumping it all out and starting all over, just get yourself a clean kitchen sponge. Dunk, dunk in there and take a little bit of water out. All right, Tony, thanks for that good information. That was pretty good. I can see a demonstration in the future for that, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, when you're out and about in the county. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, that's all we have time for today. Be sure to join us next week. Don't forget, send us an email, a letter, and let us help answer your gardening questions. You can watch past episodes online. Just go to WKNO.org and click on KNO Tonight. And be sure to follow us on Facebook and Twitter. I'm Chris Cooper, and I'll see you next time on The Family Plot, Gardening in the Mid-South. Be safe. Production funding for The Family Plot, Gardening in the Mid-South, is provided by Goodwinds Landscape and Garden Center, in Germantown since 1943, and continuing to offer its plants for successful gardening with seven greenhouses and three acres of plants, plus comprehensive landscape services. International Paper Foundation. The WKNO Production Fund. The WKNO Endowment Fund and by viewers like you. Thank you.